Check out this ESP32 deep dive from Hossein Cardan. First thing I notice in your schematics is a very nice cover sheet, including 3D views of the PCB and a table of contents. Very nice job. As I click through some of your components, I did start to notice very consistent parameterization, which is a great job. In fact, you have the most consistent parameterization I have ever seen in any of the ESP32 designs I've received. One thing I did notice in your power supply page is that you didn't pick part numbers for some of these components. I will say that it is good that you picked part numbers for the capacitors because those do matter a lot more than these resistors. But again, make sure to select all of those part numbers directly in the schematic because it really helps out a reviewer like myself make sure that you made the right choice with some of these components. Now inside your PCB layout, I see you did a pretty good job with your power routing, but on the ESP32 itself, I do see quite a few common problems. The first one that is very common is the pad to pad clearance error. And then here on the back layer, we also have an antenna that we need to deal with. Also, I don't know why everybody is so obsessed with putting thermal connections to the ground pads on these ESP32 modules. You don't need them. I would say just remove all of the thermals here and allow this polygon to pour over all of the ground pads. You will get a much better connection to ground. I also see that you have some pretty random placements of teardrops. For example, you have it here, but when I look in other parts of the design, such as here coming into this pin, I don't see the teardrops. If you're going to use teardrops, just wait until the very end and then apply the teardrops everywhere. Next, on your 3.3 volt connection to your ESP32, you can see here that these vias are spaced very close together and you have less than eight mil clearance between those hole walls. That is not going to be manufacturable. Next thing I see on the back layer is you do have an antenna between these IO lines. Here, you can fix this just by moving this trace over to the right just a little bit and then moving this part of the trace down. Once you re-pour the polygon, you'll see that that empty space gets filled in with copper. I would recommend maybe even moving this trace to the other side of these vias to put even more space between those I.O. lines. Finally, let's look up here in the antenna region on the top layer. You routed these lines all the way around the outside of the ESP32, and really, that's not necessary. You've got plenty of room on the back layer to route in this region below the antenna portion of the module. What you can do is move those traces, and that's going to allow you to move this module up closer to the board edge. Want me to review your ESP32 design? Find me on LinkedIn and send me your design files.